the episode begins with Echidna drinking her own sweat. You might think her tea isn't healthy, but she had to run on the treadmill for nine hours to fill this cup. What about you? What have you done? Here we have more proof the earth isn't flat. She talks about many serious things without making any cute expressions. Who are you, and what did you do with the real Echidna? Subaru is sad, so far fine, I think it's strange when he's happy. They spin, I had no idea it's also a carousel, it's a very serviceable place, that's why Microsoft chose here to shoot. They keep talking, Subaru has a flashback in, what a hardcore way of scratching a neck. They talk talk and talk, Subaru sweats on, I know a girl who can make great tea out of it. He smiles cause he's a big fan of hot drinks. Echidna finally does something cute, she's unable to go more than 37 minutes without acting like a seasonal waifu. She even knows Subaru is a tasteless otaku that can be easily manipulated by someone with a vagina. However, weebs are famous for neglecting their personal hygiene, so Subaru lowers his head to show her his hair has no dandruff, thanks to the head and shoulders of course. He tells her there are some kissy rabbits around, they can be a bit aggressive. The rabbit's mistake is loving too much. Echidna explains they have an insatiable hunger, can multiply indefinitely, and feed on human flesh. I'd like to ask an amen for all the beautiful god creations. Echidna says she needs to go to the bathroom to fill the teapot properly, so that Subaru doesn't go without talking to any waifu. She'll call her lowly friend to entertain him till she comes back. A lowly appears, but it's the wrong one. Anyway, she says she wants to show a magic trick to Subaru. He holds her hand, okay, I don't need to call the cops so far. So she rips Barusu's arm off without him noticing. That's her little trick, now you have an arm, now you don't. Subaru goes into complete despair. She tells him to stop screaming like a fucking slut cause he doesn't even feel pain. He asks for his arm back, but ends up being shattered like an LSD pill, is that a mother land of lustrous reference? Typhon leaves and another witch falls on the spot like a meteor. It's exactly like watching a modern Mahu shoju, even the protagonist is a hot girl. She punches Subaru pieces making him go back to normal, she's the opposite of Saitama. Her name is Minerva, the angry witch and I want her stepping on me already. I want it even more now. Finally, here she is, the lowly Subaru is looking for. She uses this sarcophagus to get around because sarcophagi are more practical than legs. Subaru asks why she made a flying cachalot, and how can he defeat the rabbits to save thousands of lives. I don't really care about it, this girl is drooling all the time and her teeth are better drawn than Frederica's, it makes me a little upset. Damn, I must admit she has the coolest design of all ReZero characters, anyway, we're skipping. Echidna is back, I was wrong about a thought. As everyone says Satella is similar to Amelia and Echidna also looks like her, I assumed all witches would resemble Amelia, but that's not the case. Suddenly Subaru Subaru has a brain freeze, I didn't expect it to be iced tea. Look what you did, spilled all the tea, now the tablecloth is soaked with piss and love nectar. Before leaving, Subaru wants to show off the portable toilet paper he carries on his wrist. Echidna even asks to touch it a little bit, toilet paper is a luxury item in this dimension. He wakes up vomiting cause nobody deserves to drink witch's piss, not even from the cute ones. Subaru is happy to have kept his emergency napkin. He leaves the sanctuary and finds everything being engulfed by a strange shadow. Then Satella appears and Subaru shits himself. Garfield appears and saves him jumping. She told me she met a new guy. Then they jump on top of a house to be safe for the next 7 minutes. In the next episode, she's chasing them and the last episode didn't even end like this. Do you think you can fool a wise ass man like me? Maybe it's not a chase, maybe they're just racing and she's really bad at it. Suddenly a lowly army appears from the forest. They're machines to destroy lives, 13 Oni Chans went to jail thanks to them. It's time for the clash, I didn't imagine her so tall. Garfield transforms from Kellogg's tiger high on juice. Satella catches him with her black tentacles, are you ready to lose your virginity Garfield? The lowly army advances in a suicide attack, I knew they're clones, but I didn't expect them to be Megaman clones. Garfield breaks free, but she leaves him with more holes than a blind person in a mass shooting. Now he fits in a cereal bowl, but it'll be a bolognese flavored cereal. Satella swinging is pretty funny, I don't know, looks like she's a drunk penis. Subaru yells at her, he's probably saying she's a dick. Satella doesn't like that, and it makes him go back in time, if you know what I mean. Not before Subaru finds out her face is the same as Amelia's. They even have the same voice actor. I didn't read the novel so it wasn't a spoiler just something for you to reflect on in the bathroom. Here we are, again, one more time. Subaru decides not to wake her cause even he's curious about what happens if he lets her wake up by herself. But she takes so long to wake up he gives up. Amelia realizes Subaru is cold, he's even making faces cause of the cold. All those things we already know happen, let's go to what's different. The main character wants to ask Ram something, she doesn't want to accept it, so he does the Slav pose to show maybe he's dangerous. Subaru is training race through the forest thinking- he needs to train cause last time he lost a race like that a huge shit fucking happened. Subaru finds the place he was held in captivity a few episodes ago and decides to enter, a wise decision. He finds a crack and decides to fit this stone into the hole. Thankfully he did it so the plot can run properly. This door opens, and it's the fucking heaven. He finds the original Loli inside that crystal, her canonical name is Annie Lenhart. I think this clone is more important than the others cause she wears different clothes and has a staff. They'll talk in her room. Well, Subaru-kun, there's a chain available right there. He's the next Oni-chan going to jail. Subaru flashbacks on Echidna's delicious tea because, I dunno, maybe he likes it. 
it. On the forest path he also flashbacks about his latest deaths. Some people would call it trauma, I call him pussy. He finds Amelia in pajamas in the dark forest. There are apparently not a lot of rape cases in this medieval world. I'm not saying she shouldn't do what she wants because she should. But I'd highly recommend doing it with a knife or something. Subaru is a weirdo after all. Oh, look how cute Amelia can be, but I still prefer Echidna, and Rem, and Frederica. I think Ori and the Blind Forest was recorded here. I told you he's a fucking weirdo. In the morning, Subaru writes a letter to his friends. But he was unfortunately not literate so he makes a drawing. Again he's on his way to the mansion. Garfield's here to stop him just because. Garfield has no reason to do half the things he does. See, why the fuck you doing this man? And why are you smiling? You fuck world class masochist. If you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe. I'd like to ask you to watch at least two videos of the channel in a row because it helps me a lot. Also make a friend watch this video too. Use violence if necessary. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Bye.